Hi guys, just before we start today's video, just want to do a big shout out to all the guys that have taken out YouTube membership. Thank you for the continued support and welcome to the new guys that have obviously have taken out YouTube membership as well. Thank you so much for the support guys. It really is appreciated. Uh, just one last thing, please don't forget about the Discord channel. Brilliant place to be, new and old players alike. Come and say hello. It really is a fantastic place uh, just to get to know some people and obviously have a bit of fun while playing Star Citizen. Well, let's get on with today's video. Hi everybody, Space Junkie here. Hope you're all keeping well. Today we are going to be looking at the basics of ship combat. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through the key binds as always and we're going to do that first to get you familiar with obviously the buttons and where you need to be looking potentially when you're in a ship, ship combat situation. Um, I'm in the Anvil Arrow. I'm in a bog standard white flight suit. You don't want to come out in anything more than that. Now to look around your ship this is your current shield status. Okay, so you need to keep an eye on that. And obviously, as you're taking damage, these little sides will get narrow, narrow, narrow till they turn red, and then eventually they will disappear. And then you've got no shields. Okay, so it's very, very important you keep an eye on that. Just down here, this is where your powers are going for your capacitors and that sort of stuff. So you've got weapons, shields, thrusters. Okay, so it's very, very important. You, again, need to keep an eye on this. When you first start out doing ship combat, don't get too hung up on it. Get used to flying the ship. Get used to, obviously, your your, your awareness and positioning and all that sort of stuff. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start using keybinds to start increasing your weapon power, your shield power, and thrust power. Now, you only get used to, obviously, being able to do this once you've been in probably many, many dogfights and know when to also increase your thrusts, when to increase your shields, and then when to increase your weapons. It's all basically comes down to the situation you find yourself in. All right. What you'll also find is when you're in a ship combat situation, you will have your target here. So once again, you'll have a picture of their ship and the shield status around that ship in this one just here. Now you can obviously put your MFDs to show that for you. And you'll see, you'll see as you fire at them, their shields would be depleting as well. Okay. Now, while we're on this screen, what you've got is we've got the Scorpion Gatling gun on the ship, and we've also got the laser distortion repeater just on here. Okay. Now, it's one of those things, that, again, depending on obviously ship loadout, I've kept this basic. I haven't changed anything. This is a stock arrow. Okay. And we're obviously going to be using this ship. So if you push your right mouse button, as you can see, it fires the laser cannon. With this left mouse button, you can see it's firing a Gatling gun. But obviously what we don't want to do is, is chew through this ammo, because this is all the ammo you've got. 293 rounds now out of 295. Once you've depleted that, that's it. That's all your shots gone. So let's look at the key binds you're going to need. Hit escape options, keybinds. Now, you may want to rebind some of these keys so they're more easily accessible. I'm using, again, keyboard and mouse today because this is obviously what most of you are going to be using. Depending on your mouse, I have got uh, an MMO mouse, so I've got actually 12 buttons on the side of my mouse. What I've done is I have remapped F5, F6, F7, and F8 on my mouse. So I know that literally hitting one, two, three, and four, I'm in full control of obviously where my power is going to at any one stage. Okay. You may want to, if you haven't got a mouse like that, you may want to rebind these to your number keys, uh, or you may want to rebind them to obviously numbers just above your WASD, so they're all easily accessible. You might want three, four, five, and six or something. It's, it's entirely down to you or where, what you find comfortable and easily reachable when obviously doing ship combat and that sort of stuff. So F5 increases your engine power. F6 increases your shield power. F7 is your weapon power. And when you've got your weapon power at max, it literally gives you more shots. Okay. And also recharges if you're using something like laser repeaters quicker. F8 resets those all so it's all back to 50 50 if you like or 33 as it says on the mfd which i'll show you again in a second 
T is to target lock. Once you've obviously targeted enemy, if you push number five, it will cycle through the different targets you have. So you can see what you're up against. If you push number six, it will cycle through your friendly targets. Okay, so T to target once you've locked on. Cycle through the hostile targets, number five. If you want to untarget, if you hold Alt, left Alt, I'll get on it, left Alt and T, it unlocks that target. Okay, so that unlocks that. G is something called gimbal mode. Now this is pretty much, I would call it like a, a computer targeting system. If your ship has it, it can be useful for when you're starting out to get a little bit more used to obviously when to fire, when not to fire. But personally, if you can, try not and use gimbal mode. Try and obviously get used to shooting uh, without the gimbals on because it eventually you will make you a better pilot and you'll probably land more shots, I would say. G also increases the missiles. So once you've obviously pushed your middle mouse button, what you're doing is you've selected your missile mode and you can increase the amount of missiles you're going to fire. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. H is to launch a decoy, and J is to launch a noise decoy. Now, again, if you launch uh, a noise decoy, it can obviously disrupt people from being able to lock onto you and that sort of stuff. Uh, and that's pretty much it, I would say, for a basic flight tutorial and combat tutorial you're going to need to worry about, because there's a lot of buttons there. I'm sure you can agree that you're going to, you're going to be trying to Think, oh, and look, I'm trying to find what buttons to press. So let's just come back out of this. So if I push my middle mouse button now, you can see I've literally got my missiles come up. If you've got more than one missile type, if you right click your mouse button, you can see I'm switching between different types of missiles. Okay. If I push G now, you can see I'm increasing the amount of missiles I'm going to fire. So as it is at the minute, I'm going to fire three. And you can literally just keep tapping G and on how many you want to launch. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. If you push the middle mouse button again, you're back to obviously the Gatling guns and the distortion repeaters. All right, so hopefully that makes sense to you all. So if we just go down here, we're going to look at this. So what you're going to do is this is your power triangle. So if I push number one on my mouse, I'm now 100% on my weapons power. And if we go back up here, you can see that that's increased to 63 shots. I've gained another 10 shots. If we do number four on my mouse, it's reset everything. Okay, and that would be F8 for you guys. If I push number two, I know I've got 100% to all my shields. So the shields will regenerate quicker. If I do number three, it's then put everything at thrust. So I know obviously my boost is going to obviously regenerate a bit quicker. So again, depending on what you're using, depends on obviously what where your keys are going to be. So hopefully that doesn't make sense, guys, and I haven't just confused you by obviously using my mouse buttons rather than the F8 keys. All right, so I'll tell you what, let's go through it again. So what you'll be using is obviously the keys on your keyboard. So your F5, F8 and you'll be cycling through. So you want to hold it down, to put all your obviously power to weapons, hold it down to put all your power to shields, hold it down once again, your power to your thrusters, and then F8 would reset it back to zero. Okay, so everything is evenly distributed. All right, so I really hope that makes sense, guys. If it doesn't, please do send me a message obviously in the comments and I'll do my best to obviously answer it for you. What I'm going to do is we're going to do F1, with anything in Star Citizen, you need to earn your stripes. So we're going to do a, a bounty hunter. We're going to need to do a tracker training permit certification. Now, it's always a, a very low risk target. OK, and obviously these increase and get harder and harder as you get better and better. Always pay attention to where obviously the actual contract is. So this is saying it's down on Uterpy. Um, and again, you just need to make sure that obviously you're looking at what they are making sure obviously you're selecting a ship combat rather than obviously a ground combat because obviously on bounty you do get ground targets as well as obviously ship targets okay so we're going to accept this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure i also put on generals tab we're going to go mercenary 
call to arms. So we're getting our extra 500 Alpha UEC for every person that we take out. And again, eventually that should pop up here. Now, guys, contracts are being a little bit um, rubbish at the minute. Sometimes you need to go back in and select the same thing twice for it to come up. It is very, very slow. There we go. So eventually come up. So and then we can look at our accepted and we're tracking the right one. So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get us to the actual target location where I'll bring you back in and I'll try and talk you through obviously the ship combat as we go. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, guys, had a bit of a nightmare. Um, the first mission we selected bugged out and I've just, just could not get another uh, tracker training permit to load around Crusader. So what I've ended up doing, um, I've had to jump to, uh, where are we, just outside Hurston to actually get a contract. It's been an absolute nightmare. So I have had to change ships. Uh, we're in the Vanguard Warden, which is a medium fighter. Well, actually, it might be a heavy fighter. I can't remember that. Um, but again, just going to talk you through, obviously, what you need to do when it comes to ship combat. Now, sometimes you will have a approximation of where the target is. So you will need to jump to a location and then fly to the actual target's destination, which is what I'm doing now. Um, one thing you need to make sure is when you are engaging a target, I would say your velocity speed needs to be around about 300. Um, anything more than that, it's it's very hard. You're just going to keep shooting past it like you wouldn't believe very, very quickly and hard, find it hard to engage the actual targets. So slow your actual speed down to around about 300. Uh, when obviously you are flying towards the target, do not fly directly at it. The AI absolutely loves crashing into the ship. A word of warning, do not fly directly at your target because what will happen is you're just going to fly straight into the enemy ship and you'll both explode and it's obviously yeah, just a bit pointless. What I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously, now I've obviously just said those bits to you, going to get us in a little bit closer, bring you guys straight back in once the combat starts. Okay guys, so we're getting closer to the target. I've reduced our speed to around about just over 300. Um, this target is particularly close to the ground. So obviously what you normally find is that either be around asteroid belts or obviously just in the atmo of a planet. So again, just be very, very aware. Obviously you've got the added potential of crashing into the ground uh, or an asteroid. And once you're, you're fixated on a target, believe me, it's very, very easy to do. So what I've done is I have selected a missile. I'm not going to fire it. I'm just going to bring you close enough in so you can see obviously the missile reticle and what happens once obviously you've got a lock. So in a few more seconds, we will obviously be a little bit closer to the target. It will tell us we've got a target, which is when we will press T. Uh, and I'm just going to show you exactly what happens when obviously you've got your missile selected. Just so you get an idea of obviously all the different targets and that sort of stuff as well. So this is a tracker training permit, so not quite sure what he's going to be in. Probably be something quite small, uh, normally on their own. But yeah, you just got that added anxiety of obviously uh, crashing into the ground on these because as I say, they are particularly low to the ground. So nearly on him now. Just going to push in a little bit closer. Just wanted to bring you guys back in a little bit earlier just so you can see all the difference obviously uh, in bits and pieces regarding preparation. We could wipe this thing out just by firing loads of missiles at it. Um, by all means, if that's for your, your play style and that's how you want to do it, go for it. Um, but obviously just be mindful in the smaller ships, you will only have potentially, you know, three, four missiles, depending on obviously what you're flying as a starter ship or obviously as your fighter. So now the target's disappeared. We're going to get a bit closer. Here we go. It will tell us that there is a target in a second. Potentially on his own, he may have a friend. Again, you never know with these bounties and that sort of stuff. We're just cruising in at just under 300. Again, do not fly directly straight at the target. Because again, they just they just love flying straight at you and blowing you up. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get ourselves into a few scenarios so where you can see obviously the different bits and pieces that you're going to expect in a flight combat, which is brilliant. And obviously, the cloud covers disappeared. So just going to get a little bit closer. Should tell us in a second we got a target. I'm going to start seeing obviously the target reticle turn up, the actual missile lock on. Here we go. Push T. And as you can see, this activates 
the missile lock. So you need to wait for that whole circle. That is now locked. So we could fire our missile now. Okay, by using the left mouse button. But we're not going to do that. We're going to get rid of those. And we're going to engage with obviously our laser repeaters. Just going to get him. Just want to get a little bit closer. So now, that is the square. When, as you can see, you're hovering over that. It will turn green and go a little bit smaller. So that's telling us. Get a little bit closer again. Here we go. Here we go. A little bit closer. You see that turn green. Now we can fire and we will hit our target. If we had gimbal mode, what you'll see is that you'll automatically track it. And as you can see, I was just trying to fly directly at it there just so I could get that target to uh, appear for you. Once again, just going to fly just to the side of it, just in case you decide to come straight at us. And again, what you do is you just strafe to the right and try and keep your crosshairs in that square. And then you can engage the target, as I say. I'm literally holding forward, W, and D to strafe. So obviously, I'm not flying directly at it. And as you can see now, we're taking damage. Uh, it looks like he's potentially got a friend behind us as well. So there may be two targets here. And what you aim, want to aim is you want to try and get, yeah he has there look. you want to try and get behind the ship like we are now before engaging you'll fly past you'll do a sharp turn and then you'll get on the back side of it and this is when you want to try and fly at it so he will turn back at us just like so we're going to sharply turn use a little boost stay on him and then we can literally target him just like so and again as you can see when we're taking damage our shields are flashing red you can see that we're taking hits don't want to engage him just yet just trying to show you guys all the bits and pieces that you're going to potentially see when we're dogfighting and that sort of stuff so we're strafing to the right we're going to get our crosshairs on him so we'll be firing now 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 not yet now 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 when that turns green again guys it's a lot of practice to get all this targeting worked out and that sort of stuff if you wanted to circle your targets or change targets like we've just said you would use obviously number five cycle on the next target if we want to start engaging we can do again we're literally boost past him like so we got a bit of damage there and we've got plenty of shields and then literally as soon as you can see that turning green start engaging and i'm literally just using you can see now we've run out of nutrition if you've got there we go so he's he's down so nice and easy. Didn't take too much. Just pushed number five, and that should be our the other guy. Where is he? Around somewhere. Let's on our backside. Push away from him. Should be able to swing back around. And see the target. There he is. I'm gonna fly back at him. Again, try and fly directly at it. As soon as that target turns green, start firing. Just gonna let him strafe past. He's lost one of his wings. He's obviously crashed into something. Another target down. So guys, I really hope that makes sense. How you sort of try and target, how you try and get yourself in a position so you'd fly past it, you'd do a real quick turn, and you'd try and get on its backside using a bit of boost, and then obviously you start firing away. As you can see, we've got attrition's here, which obviously deplete really, really quickly. And obviously we've got our other laser cannons is down the side if I hold down my left and right mouse button we're firing everything all at the same time if I wanted to just use one set of weapons I'd use the right and on the other side we'd obviously just use the left mouse button for the attrition what you've got is you can see we've got 48 noise decoys which unfortunately didn't fire any missiles at me I was hoping they would but they didn't and we've got five noise decoys and if I go to F4 just looking outside the ship 
zoom out a little bit. If we do noise decoy, should be able to see that hopefully deploy out the ship. No, oh, doesn't want to do that for me. Pretty cool. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Eventually, the server's obviously got a bit of a delay on it. But you can see there, that's what happens, obviously, when you get a noise decoy and that sort of stuff. So, guys, I really hope this makes sense. Um, if you've got any queries or questions, please do let me know in the comments. Um, I will, obviously, follow up with a bit more on an, an advanced um, tracker training and that sort of stuff once obviously we've progressed and obviously slot um, unlocking a slightly harder target and that sort of thing but you should find in your starter ships or small fighters up to potentially medium risk you should be okay um, to take on a lot of targets but again guys it takes a lot to take these on so just be very very mindful um, oh I've actually got a cutlass black which again is a strong target. Um, oh, I think that's actually a player, so we won't engage those. Just got to be very, very careful because obviously I could engage those. That target just down there, obviously get myself a uh, bit of a prison sentence. So yeah, that was lucky. Uh, so yeah, guys, I really hope it makes sense. Anything you're not sure about, do leave a comment. Um, as I was saying, you should be okay to engage a fair few targets uh, once obviously uh, you know you're in your starter ships and that sort of stuff. But yeah, just just be very, very careful. Um, but just take your time, practice it. If you really are struggling, why not go on to the Arena Commander? That's probably going to be a really good, safe bet just to practice. Doesn't matter how many times you crash into one another or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's, you're not losing your gear or your ships and having to constantly respawn and all that sort of thing. It can get quite frustrating, obviously, when you're constantly having to do that. So, guys, once again, thank you for watching. Please don't forget about our Discord channel. Um, it's grown all the time. We've got some fantastic members on there. Uh, if you're a new player obviously looking for advice or an old player looking to obviously get some friends it really is a brilliant place to be uh, everybody's welcome all play styles are welcome and obviously it'd be great to always oh, uh, does want to engage uh, it'd be great to have you guys with us and obviously i look forward to seeing you there so what we're going to do is we'll engage some uh, rattler missiles off him up a bit the rattlers are great because what they do is they hopefully they they will work they are a bit buggy at the moment as you can see, in a minute, we fire those, all four, off there you go, hopefully they hit, yep, all of those hit, as you can see we've just literally taken down a lot of his shields and a lot of damage, fire the next four, this is where you can see just how devastating missiles are, there you go, down he goes. The Rattlers are, are brilliant, and they're great fun. So guys, sorry, as I was saying, easily distracted as always. Don't forget about the Discord, guys. Everyone's welcome. It'd be great to have you along. Uh, obviously, thanks to everyone again for obviously who's taken out the YouTube membership. Thanks for your support, guys. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. You guys take care, and bye-bye for now.